Hi everyone, welcome to the episode 20 of MOV Leaders, where we celebrate women leaders. Today I am going to recall the remarkable historical moment created by Shrisha Bandla. She flew in the galactic satellite uh, along with Richard Branson on July 7th. So she is the second Indian born astronaut who is traveling to space after Kalpana Chawla. Isn't it a remarkable moment? Great thing, uh, Shrisha, you are an inspiration. Congratulations to you and looking forward for more such achievements. Today, I'm going to introduce my guest. She is very special because she is, ha she is having versatility in changing careers and excelling in everything she does. She is the founder of two interesting ventures called Bubble Wrap and Badla India. Currently, she is taking care of sales for retail in Microsoft India as director as capacity. I'm so proud and happy to welcome Saujanya Shetty to the show. Thank you so much, Sindhya. It's a pleasure and a delight to be here. I uh, hope I bring justice to the journey that you are on. And I look up to this next one hour that we're going to have conversations around Great. Uh, and all the aspects. Great, Saujanya. So how are you being, how are you feeling to be part of uh, MOV Leaders? Um, excited uh, and also humbled uh, because I've seen some of the other interviews and uh, they always left a very um, deeper thought process for me. So um, privileged to be amongst uh, this in the 20th episode. Thank you so much. That's amazing, Sarjanya. And uh, congratulations uh, for being the most influential women in, the, in analytics uh, field. Um, knowing you, I have seen a lot of achievements you have made in the last couple of years, starting from an engineer at Bharat Electricals to a director uh, in Microsoft India today. You have crossed remarkable journeys. Starting from IAM, we wanted to know your journey, both in personally and professionally, Saujanya. That's a long story. Um, I've been in the tech industry for close to 25 years now. I'm actually uh, coming into my 25th year and 80% of this career journey has been focused on program management and product management. Um, I basically started off my career as a chipset, hardware chipset designer at Bharat Electronics and moved on to a very niche programming area called um, intra programming in Honeywell uh, before I embarked on a completely different career shift uh, into pre-sales in the U.S. at a company called Sea Change, and then I found home as a program manager, product manager at HP, uh, where I worked for close to uh, 14 years, uh, pivoting primarily around enterprise sales processes and uh, sales analytics. And for the last four years, I've been on a more a different journey around sales, which is the business development in the sales role itself. Um, with sales and the BDM stint that I have right now with Microsoft and the sales exposure I have, I believe I'm one of the few folks out there uh, in the industry who's got this holistic experience that cuts across product engineering, product management, sales and business development. And uh, through these 24 years, I have uh, developed a very strong uh, and this whole various roles have played um, I've developed a very strong uh, empathy for our customers, a very deep understanding of uh, the business and the market needs, um, and also a good depth on change management and also on personality development. And I think that's at the core of who I am um, in this whole journey so far. Interesting, Saujanya. It's an amazing uh, journey. So when I hear your story and when I see your profile, I could see uh, you have uh, done a lot of career transition, a lot of career change uh, from different streams. So uh, I'm tempted to ask this because um, I'm opposite of you. Uh, though I have tried in different industry, but I was always on marketing. Uh, I never uh, tried on a different field, but I have seen uh, very few people like you uh, who take a bold 
a chance to move around different roles among different country uh, different companies sometimes different countries and so on so um, this is a question i wanted to ask so how do you see uh, career changes help women or sometimes they face challenges in their goals networking and financial independence etc so if someone wants to do the career transitions what all things they should take care uh, to be uh, successful in that according to you sojanya so for me i i think it doesn't take a lot of algorithms to realize you know what your career journey should be um when you're comfortable with something it's very hard for an individual to change change is not that easy you sort of think and you cringe on starting over you sort of uh, are afraid of something you're happy and excited to explore something but at the same time you probably are fearful of you know something else what if i fail it is not the right thing you know there are a whole lot of ambiguity uh, that you deal with as well uh, but that's why it's very important to find your purpose um for me i think as an individual i've always been a learner and my style of learning is very experiential learning um while i enjoy reading books and all that stuff it's a very experiential learning and that sort of became the reason for me to sort of explore new things in my career because i was always curious to know okay now i understood this how does this work how does this work so it's been a journey that way so continuous learning um is a very self motivated uh, persistent way of acquiring knowledge and competencies in order to expand one skill set um and also develop future opportunities um in this process i think i have learned around seven um benefits if i can call it on this lifelong journey experience right the first one would be you know how do you stay relevant there's so much changing in the world whether it is with technology business models um how customer behaviors are you know influencing strategies you know how do you stay relevant um you know as one thing then how do you prepare for the unexpected like the covid situation is the worst unexpected thing you cannot prepare for that and at the same time how do you make yourself ready for the unexpected like you know how do you position yourself in the right place at the right time uh becomes very important how do you boost your profile uh one of the mantras i sort of lived with is every role if there is no line item i can add back to my profile saying here's what i learned then that's not been you know fruitful in its journey itself um and i think as you go through this journey you build a whole lot of self confidence um and that's because of the competency you're building as well right you're not right. stagnant on one thing you're actually taking that you'll have to unlearn relearn into a new space but as you do that there's a competency building that happens and that feeds into your self confidence um it also allows you to think differently and think very laterally it sparks complete new ideas case in point are the two startups itself um on how i went on that journey it changes your perspective it brings in a lot of empathy to different roles because you're able to put yourself in different shoes because you're changing into different roles um you're able to put yourself in different shoes and very importantly in this journey because you're learning there are quite a lot of mentors you learn from your network role then as to what are some of the tickers what are some of the you know things you need to imbibe on so it's also very important to pay it forward so networking is not just about hi sindhya i know you it's also about how do i help you how do i give something that i have to you then it just comes back in some way or the other for you as well so i think this has been um you know the most important aspect but at the core of it these are learnings right since yeah but at the core of it it's also when you're embarking on this journey you need to uh, keep a few things in perspective one is you need to have a very strong financial independence yeah you know, 
you must be in a position where you can explore something like this. You must create that environment for yourself where you're comfortable to take such risks. You need to have a combination of curiosity, growth mindset, and a belief in yourself. Your self-talk is very, very important in this whole thing. And also, like I said, network to learn and contribute, not just to say hello, hi, and oh, I know this person. Um, give. In the networking journey, give more than take, give. I think uh, these, along with stepping out of your comfort zone, continuously discovering yourself, identifying what gives you joy and what are you fearful about, what are you apprehensive about, are some really important aspects. Another thing that was also instrumental is this whole funda of slow motion multitasking, wherein I don't have a deadline on some of these learning journeys. You know, I might just start with exploring on it. And at some point, you build enough knowledge to be able to go and say, hey, can I try that? I, right. I've not done it, but I'm curious to know and I would love to learn. Can I try that? And I think that mindset is one where, you know, if you're in the right company, in the right culture, um, right. there are many avenues and opportunities for you to learn. Very Long answer to your uh, question, no, but I hope it gives clarity. No, the question itself was deep and intense because it's very important uh, for people to know because uh, there is a lot of difference. Uh, it is not good that you jump often, right? It, yeah. uh, changing the career transition is different. You need to plan. You need to know like why I am doing that. It should not be a yeah. choice of, like, okay, I'm getting paid more or she is doing that or someone I know is doing that. Okay, let me go and try that. That hopping yeah. is not but changing yeah. career for good for me yeah. to learn, for me to risk. I have a patience. I have a growth mindset. I wanted to learn. Let me acquire that skill set. So I am changing the career as the motive. So that is yeah. something you have beautifully explained. And what does the outcome for that patience is also amazingly articulated. Thank you, Sarjanya, uh, for that. Another interesting one, thing. Uh, yeah. So uh, one additional thing is in this journey, um, oftentimes we we have this notion right you choose you don't choose your family but you choose your friends um similarly you choose your manager you choose the company correct the so the important. culture and the manager the mindset of your team everything plays a huge role when you're going through this journey because you're taking the wildest risk for yourself in this journey because you're basically putting the best foot forward and so also finding that fitment is very, very important. Very, very nicely uh, said, Sarjanya. Another very interesting thing I have noticed in your uh, profile is attitude makeover. So I understand that you created that concept and coaching uh, people to protect their future career. Just an interesting concept. So can you narrate the story of attitude makeover for us, Sarjanya? Sure. So for me, uh, like I said, my journey has been a very rediscovering myself sort of a journey that I've had in my career. And Attitude Makeover is all about it's about rediscovering yourself, your inner innate strengths with the focus primarily on your personality, starting with what is your purpose um, and then managing change because you're going through so much change. How do you manage change? Um, and finding a true CEO of your own and being your true CEO of your own career journey. Like we, we look up to an organization strategy and all that stuff. If you look at yourself as an organization, why aren't we putting the kind of thought process into what is that purpose? What is the mission? What is the strategy? What is our strength? What are our weaknesses? Where are the opportunities? Can I really tap into those opportunities? What are my, you know, threats in this whole play thing? What are my USPs? That is one part of attitude makeover. Um, and the second part is how do you manage change and how do you maneuver through that? It's a very philosophical perspective. But you see, the whole idea is if you were an organization, then how do you look at yourself? And are you doing due diligence thereby to yourself? So the focus is on an individual's personality and how they drive change. 
um, within oneself um, and also thereby to the organization that you're part of because every organization is going through a transformation so when you are very aware of you know both yourself as well as the organization goals um you know that's when you know magic happens um and i think that's where you know uh, a major interlock happens and uh, there's a journey there's a joy in that journey as well amazing uh, uh saujanya so uh this is again right managing change um amazing thing what you are doing is great i i hope many uh, people will benefit from that that today one important thing i learned uh, from this episode is how to sustain the growth mindset and have yeah. a plan around it and be prepared for unexpected things yes. and uh, you how you have to take all this risk post creating a pool it's like always like the maslow's hierarchy theory right so yes. you need to fulfill certain basic needs before you go for that self esteem state or uh, anything Absolutely. so that is that is something i learned uh, from you uh, today saujanya so you are an amazing leader and really um, we went deep into uh, the career transitioning as well as how to manage the change um, and amazing initiative by you on the attitude makeover so before wrapping up the uh, session couple of uh, rapid fire questions for you uh, saujanya so i you are 25 year um, uh, career uh, 25 years you are having a career journey and you have seen multiple fields like sales uh, you know um, uh, business development uh, ex- program management etc so i think you are the right person for me to ask this question um, since it's a madover videos community we are very interested in videos so how do you see uh, in your journey the changing over so the transition the video has taken place oh this is a very interesting topic so for me when i started really getting into the uh, content part of attitude makeover i started exploring different uh, formats and video is a huge uh, deal breaker currently so here's how i look at it and unfortunately i won't answer it in a very short one line but no, we live in, uh, in we currently if you look at all of us as consumers we live in this world where it's any time anywhere world um whether it's netflix youtube spotify all of these are already more popular among the younger viewers than the linear television and the other models that we are used to in our times right so media usage is becoming uh, more mobile more flexible and it, you, i see it like a universal supermarket because i'm no longer limited to just an uh, an audience pool of just uh, my organization or my team it's uh, the whole world um, we are consumers of wide choice of global as well as local content and the difference between um suppliers only exist from like you know exclusive productions or sports rights maybe but otherwise you know we have access to everything from stanford university's lectures to this conversation like you know and it's the whole world becomes then an exposure right now so and that's the the trend of video which i think is really cool and really good as a platform the softer aspect i feel is video sort of humanizes the brand um right when i write an article it's like reading a book but when you watch a video it's like watching the book that you read in a movie mm, so correct. it sort of humanizes the brand it makes your content more memorable uh, there's a feeling aspect that attaches to it and it becomes very digestible as well so for me i feel video is the right trend to grow uh, go into as a platform or a, a medium but uh, these are my reasons of why i think videos uh, the video future of video seems to be really bright there interesting sir jane yeah. interesting so a uh, couple of advice you if you wanted to give uh, for early starters of women in sales field what would be that I don't know if I've been a great seller. <laughs> I have to put the caveat around it. But uh, I think uh, these were five or six things I learned. First is 
you whatever role you are playing in right now first start with do you know your product and how it can help your customers um it's very important to first have that um visibility and clarity then help your customers rather than forcing them or coercing them you need to be able to understand put yourself in their shoes empathy is very important you need to understand what are their pain points and what are the other you know impacts that it has as a result of this pain point pain point and so then help them instead of coercing them to buy something you need to have clients best interest at heart always and also of your organization i think that's a huge learning it cannot just be about the client it's also about your organization you need to have the ability to build trust with that relationship and uh, you should actually build this ability to listen intently and attentively um this is a very soft skill i learned which is like you know very important in sales because there'll be one subtle word or a subtle expression or a subtle statement which brings out the pain that the customer is going through so you need to be able to listen to those and tap into those and uh, sales is not about just always success um there are failures like you know you would have put your might into a deal for like 3 months sometimes more and sometimes your competitor wins it so don't uh, be put off by failures you know use them as your stepping stone for another success, success. i think these are some fundamental things i would tell someone who is actually getting into sales is you know you need to get this bit of course there are others like you know tools and processes and all that stuff but this is the fundamental core um as a seller yes yes so great great sir then interesting so last question uh, one person if you wanted to apologize for something and one person you want to thank for something what would be that and who will be that that's a tough one huh, sitya uh, the thank one i think is much more so i think for me i grew up in a single parent household i lost my dad when i was 3 years old and it's always been my mother so for me uh, my mother and my family has been a pillar of strength where i derive energy from um so that is where gratitude grows whether it's uh, my husband who's been my kindergarten classmate for the last and I've known him for so many years wow. my daughter my sister and my mother i think but my more importantly my mom for everything that she's done for me one person you would apologize to mm, i think uh, myself <laughs> interesting okay i think um, okay so this is going to again the philosophical side when you change careers you sort of have to have the right self talk often times you know you treat yourself like you know you idiot what that is a simple thing you couldn't figure this you curse yourself i Asha. think uh, yeah so i think apologize to myself because i feel really guilty that i if i put myself as another individual and i talk to the other individual as you i feel really guilty that i put you in situations to deal with ambiguity i'm often excited to learn new skills and often go with the flow and i don't realize how much i ignored you in your and the journey that you've had so i think uh, yeah i would like to apologize to myself uh in so fact i sorry that was a tough one yeah <laughs> that was an interesting one to right so it it is a thought provoking one uh, because um, a previous episode i was chatting with preeti uh, so she was also mentioning uh, she says this three years mantra that self care uh, self awareness and seeking for mentorship and sponsorship and in that self care right sometimes we don't take care of ourselves or we curse or often we uh, be very hard on ourselves so that is yeah. something we need to um, come out of it it's very nicely uh, said uh, saujanya and also uh, there is a coincidence that um, preeti is also a single um, uh, parent child 
and she oh. also her dad in very young age i'm seeing this single parent mother who is giving a lot of attention to their daughter they are becoming amazingly strong and they, you guys are giving lot of energy uh, to the whole world and uh, thanks to all those uh, mothers so your mother name saujanya she is rohini shetty so Ro rohini ma'am it's an hats off thing uh, for you to bring up such a beautiful bold uh, you know leader for all of us to inspire and learn from so thank you saujanya once again for coming to the show it was a pleasure hosting you and i personally learned a lot from this episode i'm sure audience who has tuned in also will learn a lot the same episode is available in all podcast streaming platform as well thank you once again for joining us in the show saujanya see you all in the next episode with one another interesting guest until then this is sindhya balasing signing off from all of you thank you Thank you so much Cynthia. Thank you for this platform. Thank you. Thank you.